All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about the acquisition, and in this case, the acquisition of a PP&E of a zero interest note. So what's happening here is that we're going out to a company, we're buying a piece of equipment, and they just say, hey, we're not gonna charge you any interest, but pay us X amount of dollars every single month for X amount of time period, and then the item is yours. A good example before we get into this is on the consumer side, you've probably seen a ton of commercials for something like, hey, come into our store, buy this uh, TV, 0% interest, pay us 10 payments of $100, and it's all yours. What they're really doing is they're really selling it to you with interest. They just haven't put the interest in it. So what's happening is, is they're taking the present value of what that TV would cost, and then they would add to that interest. So you could go technically down to a store that doesn't sell it uh, by payments and you would get it for cheaper because of the value, the time value of money principle. So that's what we're getting here. Gap tells us that we can't just have a 0% interest. So we can't put this equipment into our books for $100,000. There's gotta be some interest tied to it because of the issue of time value of money and that future value money is not the same as present value money or the worth of it a year from now is not the same as the worth of it today. So this is an example that we talked about in class. I'm gonna reread the question and then we're gonna go over how we calculate it. So assume Sutter Corporation purchased a piece of equipment for their company. The company issues a $100,000 five-year zero interest bearing note to GE Equipment Services. So Sutter is buying a piece of equipment for $100,000 from GE Equipment Services and GE is issuing a 0% five-year bond or note. The prevailing market rate of the interest for obligations of this nature is 4.5. So again, assuming that they had to pay interest, they would pay interest of about 4.5%. Sutter is to pay off the note in five $20,000 installments. So every single year, they're gonna pay GE $20,000, and these payments are made at the end of each year. Prepare the journal entries for the acquisition of the equipment and the end of the first year's payment of interest expense. What is the entry at the end of the second year? Okay, so we're gonna go through the calculations, and then we'll go through some of the journal entries and kind of explain that to you. So first things first is we're gonna to have to figure out what the present value of an annuity, because this is an annuity, we're gonna give $20,000 to GE every single year for five years. So what is that $100,000 payment worth today? Because in five years, we're gonna give GE $20,000, but it's not worth the same as if we gave them 20,000 today, okay? So we use our BA2 plus calculator that we use in class, and we put in the numbers. So N would be five, because we have five periods. Interest per year is 4.5. So we're gonna use the market rate. We're gonna assume that they would have had to pay this 4.5%. So 4.5%. Remember in your calculator, just type in 4.5. Your calculator understands that that's a percentage. And so you don't need to do 0 0.045, which some students do, and then they get some wacky numbers here. Present value. So what is that $100,000 worth today? We don't know, so that's what we're trying to find. Payment, we're making a $20,000 payment each year for five years. So we're gonna put negative $20,000. Now remember that we put a negative in there because we, money's coming out. So if money's coming out, we put a negative, we leave it as a positive if money's coming in. That's gonna be an important one because you may get an error here uh, or here when you're doing it without that proper uh, negative or positive number. Future value, we would assume that we would have a zero. Now, there are arguments that, well, shouldn't it be $20,000 since that's the last payment? Yeah, it should be, but your calculator already knows that. So at the end of this, we should owe GE services nothing. Periods per year, one, okay? So in this case, the example tells us that we're making one payment a year, so that's gonna be one. So on your calculator, remember, you're gonna go to second, you're gonna go to the PY function, type in one, and remember when you put in one, you're gonna to have to press enter after, and then that, and quit, okay? So that's what we're gonna put in there. What you should get from your calculator if you compute it is 87,000 and about 800. I think it comes out to 799 and some cents, so we're gonna round it up to 87,800. So that's what it's worth. So if we were to buy it today from GE Services, all cash, 
we should pay them $87,800 instead of $20,000 for five years. Okay, so money's worth more today than it will be the same amount of money later on. So that $12,200-ish is the interest expense. Okay, so now we have to calculate the interest uh, for the first year. Uh, well, actually, now we're going to put in the journal entry that we would make on year one or day one. So on day one, when we first purchase it, we're going to have to debit equipment. The reason why we're debiting equipment is because we're increasing the equipment. If we increase the asset, it's a debit. Now, in this case, the equipment technically costs 87,800. So GAP tells us that we're going to put 87,800 for our equipment. That gives us a discount on notes payable, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, 12,200. If we add that together, we have a notes payable of 100. So in our books, we still want to say that we owe GE services $100,000, and then our equipment is 87,800. This is what I call the plug. That's the difference between that and that. And in this case, it's 12200 So what that's telling us is that we have a discount on notes payable. Really, we're going to have to pay that back um, in the form of interest. So that's kind of the interest amount over time. Okay, So that's when we purchased it. Now, what would our journal entry be if we uh, at the end of the first year? So we're assuming that this equipment was purchased on January 1st, and then a whole year goes by. Well, how we're going to do it is we're going to debit interest expense. And the amount we're going to get for interest expense is we're going to take what the equipment should have cost us and multiply by that prevailing interest market rate. Okay, so 87,800 times four and a half percent. So 87 times 0 0.045 would give us 3,951. Okay, so that would be our interest. Okay, our interest for that period would be 3,900. 51. Now, notes payable is going to come down by $20,000. Okay, if it's going to come down by $20,000, I'm going to credit or debit notes payable. So now notes payable is really 80 because I have a credit of 100,000 and a debit of 20,000. How did I pay? I paid them by cash. So I'm going to credit cash for $20,000 and then Obviously, we're off. We're off because we have a discount on notes payable. So that discount on notes payable gets credited for that same amount. Okay, three thousand nine fifty one. Okay, so now our discount on notes payable would be twelve thousand two hundred minus three thousand nine forty one. So it's almost about four thousand dollars. So we're right here at about eight thousand dollars. So. This is year, uh, when we acquire the asset, this is after year one, okay? Now, after year two, I'm gonna put it over there. Uh, after year two, we have some interest, right? So how do we get to the interest expense? Now, we're gonna put over here debit interest expense, okay? And the way that we're gonna calculate interest expense is we're gonna take 87,800, Okay, and we're going to subtract how much of the principal we've already paid. Well, how much principal that we paid? Well, we paid them twenty thousand. So technically, our notes payable comes down by twenty thousand. However, of this twenty thousand, three thousand nine fifty one was interest. Okay, so we would subtract those two. Twenty thousand. We add back 3,951 and we get 71,751. Okay, and that's what we're going to use the 4.5%. So 71,751 times 0.045 gets us 3,228. And really it's 3,229 if, uh, if we round up. 
Okay, so then notes payable would be again 20,000 cash. And then discount on notes payable, a 3,229. And that would be our entry after the second year. Couple of just checks and figures. Notice the interest was higher in year one as in year two, which would make sense because if we paid the principal down, then our interest would come down as well. Okay, so that's how we kind of calculate. Um, that's how we calculate when we have a zero percent interest on an equipment that we're going to pay over a time period. That's how we calculate the equipment costs and then the interest costs as well.